Hi, this is Dan Devlin again for the Detective Dan Devlin Show, Honorable People, Honorable Nation. Welcome. Today our program is going to deal with establishing fair elections. Now, obviously, that might seem like a ridiculous topic because it's generally perceived as being uh, unattainable. And if you look at our election process, it certainly would appear as though it's fruitless to try to straighten out our election process. But I want to go through it because I do believe, and it, as you know, because you've been watching, I know you're all loyal viewers, because you've been watching, you know that the answer is usually in the fundamentals. And so we have to ask our question, when it comes to elections, that question is, what is the primary problem or source of the problem when we come to elections? And I can almost hear you all answering money. I believe you'd be exactly correct. The problem is, look at the amounts of money that they claim are needed in order to have a successful election. Now, every once in a while, we see situations where someone who doesn't have quite as much money as someone else may still win an election. But still, there are hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, many millions of dollars in some races that are that change hands, really, between who? The average public? In some cases, that's a case. But in many situations, it's special interest groups. Certainly industry. And there may be other avenues that we don't even know about where money is funneled through to campaigns or the candidates themselves, or benefits are exchanged because someone wants something and they're willing to pay hard dollars for what they want. You know, the politicians quickly learn that it is a game of managing money. If they can convince you to pour money into a campaign so that you represent them, then that's the way they know that they have the best chance in actually getting the seat or the position that they really want. So much time is spent on raising money for an election that most people have probably had someone tell them or they realize that the vast majority of time that a politician spends, and oftentimes, remember, that politician is also already an official because he's running for re-election. You know, this isn't the first time that he's run. And, and many times, he's running for a different position than the one that he's holding. But what is he doing? He, he's spending all this time to try to generate money for his campaign. Well, because we're concerned about the fundamentals, we have to address that money issue, which we're going to do in just a minute or two. But in order to successfully address that issue, we have to ask ourselves, do we really want to solve the problem? And many of the issues that we deal with, as in many other issues, many people say we want to solve this problem, but they're not willing to do what is necessary in order to solve that problem. And because they're not willing to do what is necessary, the problem never gets solved. So we need courageous people above all else. We need courageous people who have a commitment 
to their community, you know, their state, their nation. And they're willing to do what is needed in order to solve this problem of the influence of these multi-millions of dollars in the election process. Do we have the will to do that? That's a big question and I can't answer that here. I know that many of us do have the will to successfully change this process and make it a fair process. Just because most people would say it is unattainable does not mean that that's true. And I, for one, perhaps being the eternal optimist, believe that if we look at those fundamentals, mostly the money issue, we can once again, if we ever did have fair elections, we can establish fair elections. So how would I go about that? One of the ways to do that is to examine closely where those funds are coming from. We've already talked about it a little bit. But what if we had a situation where money wasn't needed or not very much money was needed in order to successfully run in an election? Think of the dynamics that that would change. All of a sudden you'd have people from various walks of life Average people in the sense that they might have an average job, but not average in the sense of their responsibility to their community and their commitment. We would be able to have those people not be at the mercy of large corporations or special interest groups, but have a real opportunity to explain to the people who are going to be voting in that election, why you are the best candidate. Is fairness a good thing? I happen to believe that it's not only a good thing, it it's an absolutely necessary thing if we want an honorable nation. Again, I refer to it often. The name of this show is The Detective Dan Devlin Show, Honorable people, honorable nation. And in order to be an honorable nation, of course we need to be honorable people. I see nothing honorable in allowing a system to continue to exist that we know is, the word perhaps, is corrupt. It is not a fair system. And only a fair system can give you the results that most of us want. The powerful, the mover, movers and the shakers, they don't want a fair system. They like the fact that money is a very important matter in these elections because they have the contacts or they're willing to do whatever it takes in order to get that money in order to win that election. So we've established that the major problem is money. We've spoken a little bit about where that comes from. How do you stop that flow? I'm all for fairness, as you know, or you should know. But the system that is not fair will continue unless those courageous people that I spoke about can step forward with a plan that would establish that fairness within that election process. So, and I've touched on this before, we have tremendous resources available to us now that we've never had available to us before, probably in the history of man. And so, for us to be able to change what's happening within the election process, we can use those resources I've spoken about it. What I'm doing right now, I'm reaching you because there is what's called public access television. 
and we're here in Lockport, New York, shooting this video, this program, and is it costing money? Yes, it is. But where is that money coming from? The people who have the cable connections and allow you to get programs through the cable system have set aside dollars to provide the opportunity for people to come and say what they need to say, hopefully for the public good. And so these resources have been made available by the general public who have the service in their homes to bring them these television programs through the cable system. So in essence, the general public, or at least those who uh, contract for that service, provide this opportunity. And for people who want to do programs, is there an expense to it? Certainly, if we want to produce a set or we want to do editing and we can't do it ourselves, maybe we have to pay somebody to do that. Uh, maybe we have props or those kinds of things that we would need to pay for on our own. But the production of the program for us is essentially free. And I want to encourage people, take advantage of that. If you have something to say, I've never been in favor of people being silenced. Even my opponents, I want to hear what they have to say because you would be amazed if you actually sit or stand or listen to the people who are your opponents and try to understand from a non-prejudiced view where you can actually try to see where they're coming from, you would be amazed how close all of us are in the objectives we want to achieve. And so when it comes to elections, we certainly should want to establish that fair system. So if we use not only this system, but most of us can make a video from the telephones that we have. We can get that on the internet, we can use YouTube, we can use Facebook, we can use Twitter and many of the other services that would allow us to get to the general public. How much does that cost? If you ask some of the politicians who use Twitter, they know that it's a very cheap and maybe no cost at all for them to be able to get their voice directly to the general public. Now it's important that the general public understands the responsibility that they have. They shouldn't be using these communications in order to undermine the good things that can go on within the governmental process. People unfortunately do that, but we need to use those uh, tools to be able to get to the public so they can get to know us, so they can get to know the candidate, they can get to know the person who has a position that is important to know if you're going to be an official within government. And so if we use these tools, coupled with wisdom, and we want to be able to take the money out of it, where good and decent people have a chance to actually win in an election and not be obligated to numerous people who have given outrageous sums of money or access to various things that those politicians absolutely have to repay in one way or another. You and I know how they repay it. If they're trying to build a building or if they want something legalized, those officials twist and turn the rules and sometimes actually act illegally in order to achieve what that person who gave all this money really wanted to achieve. Let's not be naive. We know that that happens. 
It happens in surreptitious ways where it's hidden, if possible. And every once in a while we find out what's going on. And if we're doing our job, we make sure that those people spend time in prison for their tremendously evil behavior. We need to do more of that. I'm sure the, the politicians who are, are now officials would shake in their boots if they actually thought that the people had such a commitment they, that they would hold them accountable. We need to show people that we're willing to do what we have to do to spend the time, invest the money, uh, challenge the system, go to court if necessary, but do not accept bad behavior from those officials who work for us. They hate to hear it. But the reality is, and we've spoken about this before, the reality is that the people of the United States, the people of New York State, the people of the county and the small town that you might live in, are the people who justifiably are in charge of all those different governmental entities. What is government? Government would not exist without this general population. We're the ones who support it. And I remind people the way to not cooperate with those who are violating the law or, you know, I speak about their oath of office, their commitment to the Constitution of the United States. If we allow them to do that, that is our problem. So for us, it's a matter of having that courage, getting together with others who share that commitment and the courage, and laying down a process that says, if we limited all politicians, regardless of how much money they had, to getting to the people through these processes that I've spoken about that are generally accessible to almost anyone in American society today, we would remove the money. We would be able to have endless commercials, for example, that would be available on the internet on their website on public access television. The boards of election could make this information available at a public location where anybody, for example, the public library, any citizen could go in there and they could watch the videos or the stills or you know, the, the voice recordings of any of the officials or any of the people running for a particular office. Many people in office think that you're stupid. And justifiably, they could think that in many cases because you allow them to continue to do the things that they know they shouldn't be doing. But I have more faith in you than they have. And I know that if you would get together with your neighbors and you would find a good candidate, you would be able to work with others and establish this system because it would put fairness and justice back in the political process. And when that happens, all of a sudden everything changes. You don't get decisions made you know, by the courts. You don't get uh, bills passed by legislatures that only benefit a few people. You get this based on what is right and just because those are the people that you will then be able to put into office. It's frustrating because I've spoken about it with some of the people here. Many of you have probably had the conversation. The general public has been convinced that they have relatively little or no power to change these things that happen. As long as officials can convince you and I that 
what we're working for really is going to have no significance. You know my expression, we might as well all just go fishing, which I'd rather do, by the way. But I don't because I have this faith that somehow, if you take the time to listen, you'll know that this is so vitally important, not only to us, but as you know, the purpose of the Constitution that I've spoken about extensively is to secure these blessings of liberty that give us this freedom, ourselves, but also our posterity, who is all our descendants until the end of time. It is succeeding generations, the generations that come after us, our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and beyond. That is the vision of the founders of this nation for us to keep these individuals who will have to deal with what we leave them and to understand and to act responsibly as re responsible people of a responsible nation, honorable people of an honorable nation to make sure that the things that have benefited us are available to our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and beyond. And that's why this courageous attitude needs to take hold of us, needs to convince us that we are not just people who live in a society who can take and say that we have all these rights and demand all these things without giving and making the commitment to maintain these freedoms and these blessings for not only ourselves, but succeeding generations. None of us want to live in a society where we don't have the freedom to make our own decisions. Where we don't have the ability to make the decision to go in this direction or that direction, go to this location or that location. Where we are, in essence and reality, dictated to as to what we will do in our lives. We know, if we look at history, that other people have been reasonably free. But most often, the people who have the power in this country, the officials that we allow to stay in office, misuse their authority, and as a consequence, they chip away at these blessings of liberty by requiring you, through various laws that are passed, to be more and more restricted and less and less free. We just had a conversation uh, within the past hour discussing the things that are different now than they were 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Many of those things, many of the policies, many of the laws that have been passed someone 30 years ago couldn't possibly imagine that we would be bold enough to require some of the things that we're requiring. Oftentimes, we claim to be an honorable nation. We claim to be a moral nation. We claim to be a good nation, a blessed nation. But all of those things, to actually possess them, to have them as a society, requires 
that we pay attention and do whatever needs to be done. And around the world, people have found, finally said, we've had enough. They rise up and they overthrow the officials that are doing these evil things. In the process, they've destroyed their society. I plead for people to be honorable people and to understand that we need to have an honorable nation because we all want to be treated honorably when it comes to the things that we want to do in life. Our children, our grandchildren, they equally want these things or would want these things once they come into physical existence. But life is built on the deeds that are done by the people who precede us. And we being the people who will not be here someday, we leave a legacy to others. And many of the things that will happen will be a result of the people who we put in office. There are tremendously good people out there. Many of those people do not have the access to become the officials that we need them to be. But we can change that. And the way that we change it is we push to have a fair election process. And we can have that when we say, no, you cannot use endless dollars, even if they're your own dollars, because we want to set down in front of us a program where everyone can display that they can use the resources available efficiently and to the betterment of all the people in your community and the United States. So there are answers to these problems. We've talked about establishing a fair election process. We can do it, but it takes you, it takes you being concerned, active, responsible, and courageous. It really is up to you because you're the one who makes a decision and accepts this responsibility or ignores it. I have a view of our communities that can be tremendous, that can provide tremendous opportunities. But we need that fair election process, and you are the key to having it happen. Contact tact us at honorablepeoplehonorablenation.org. I'm Dan Devlin for the Detective Dan Devlin Show. Have a great day.